Hi everyone, my name is Neville Bhandara and I am the copy chief at Vogue India. Welcome to the virtual edit of the Vogue wedding show. My guest today is someone whose talent and spectacular style has wowed everybody from Joan Rivers to Oprah to John Galliano. For over 40 years, he has been creating overflowing fantasy-filled floral installations that prove the sky is the limit. Please welcome floral expert and wedding planning dynamo Preston Bailey. Neville, thank you so much for having me. Such a pleasure. Ah. Thank you so much for being a part of this. We're really looking forward to it. Um so I'm just going to jump right in. Um tell us as someone who's sort of thrived on social interactions and brought life to so many parties for over so many so many years. How has this past year been? How has it been with this life of social distancing that we've been living? And what has been your biggest learning? Neville, to be honest with you, it's been horrible. <laughs> and when I say that, I mean clearly my office is in New York City. and we are all affected by it and you know the hotels are closed there's a lot of small businesses that unfortunately have been able to shut down that I haven't survived so you know we're living in a very difficult time but at the same time i must say for me um it was a break you know i live in this industry that i get up at 4 in the morning and you know at night at night is work 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 and for a few months i basically had nothing to do so that was such a luxury for me uh so you know and of course the first 3 or 4 months that was okay was running eating and watching netflix but then the reality set in that we had to survive and what i started doing and i think any person in any business should probably do the same the first thing that I did very practical solutions like collecting all of my clients a uh, past clients uh, names and sending them her hello and how are they doing and you'll be amazed that connection was so absolutely profitable in the sense that a lot of them started talking about you know events that they will do in the future and another thing that I thought was very um you know that I did which I started editing my life I went to my office and started getting rid of things that I didn't need, only keeping the things that are really important to me. And also, it was a wonderful time to sit down and create. How often do I have the luxury of that I can sit all day and just play and come up with different ideas and different designs? So you know, for me it was two things one it was horrendous because we were all challenged and we don't have work but at the other hand it was restful and also i try to make it as creative as possible now we have the vaccine sort of rolling out and there seems to be some sense of normalcy you know around the corner so how do you think it's it's going to be for weddings how are they going to look now i mean is it ever going to be the same uh, i <laughs> I really really think that our clients are just itching to get out there and celebrate. I think that's the great news. Uh you know I was lucky enough uh, a week ago to do a wedding in the Maldives. And as you know the Maldives is all these small islands that everybody's on quarantine and you know everyone get tested a million times. So all of my clients and my guests arrived and you know they were mass free. they were partying like crazy and i think that every single client that i've spoken to that have postponed their event for the future they cannot wait to celebrate i think at the moment that we go back to normalcy we are going to be slammed with work so i am very hopeful and i think that's a, a direction that we're going to be going So that's that's a lot of growth hopefully for the new year coming around. It is a lot. And you know and again, I don't know about in in your area, but a lot of people have postponed parties for 2021, 2022. So like the people are looking for venues and they, there's none because everybody's booked from the work from a year ago. So you know, I think it's very hopeful and I think you know, we all go to be encountering the clients that want to shop around a little bit. Oh my god, you have to re- we have to be ready for the shoppers. 
and people that are looking for better value and all of that is going to be part of this new way that we do business but i'm very excited and i'm very hopeful that the celebrations are coming what do you think the trend forecast or the mood is going to be like when people come back it's like you said people are dying to party they're dying to celebrate what kind of outlook do you think is there going to be is it going to be even grander than ever before well <sighs> I don't know about grandeur, by the way. <laughs> I really don't, because again, you know, clearly, I'm fortunate enough that a lot of my clients are very wealthy, and maybe they haven't been affected by this. But I think most people are affected by Corona somehow, and I think they are going to be looking for better value, not better prices necessarily, but better value. And I think that's one of the things that us as business people need to learn how to say listen i'm going to take your buck and i'm going to stretch it as much as i can but i do think that there's going to be a lot of of of, of beautiful events do i think they're going to be as over the top as before i don't know i, I question that tell us a little bit about you know some of your personal favorites and like the memorable most memorable installations you've created what what oh, went into yeah. that what made it stand out tell us about any one or two that particularly come to mind? Oh my God, events that I've, I've done. I mean, I was lucky enough to be involved with both children of the Ambani family. Uh, one of them, which again, that I thought, as far as I'm concerned, you know, this is a family that entertains better than anyone else in the entire world that I've worked with. But there's a couple of uh, statements that we did for a couple of the events that they did that was really, I thought, very unique. But you know, for me, I think my best work is the next job that I'm doing. <laughs> Not something that I've done in the past, but the next one that I'm doing. And the reason is very simple. I've never seen it before, so I'm excited about it. I want to see what's going to work. You know, I have all of these great ideas that I put down on paper, but see, seeing it come to life that for me is the big moment. That's what I live for. And that's what I look forward to. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your recurring themes and motives, like the elephant behind you. It's something that <laughs> lends itself to your work quite often. So, and that's also quite a big part of Indian culture, right? It's very synonymous with India. So what inspired you to create these, these, uh, you know, these animals and how did it come about? And how do you react to people who, you know, now look to you for inspiration or do I dare say reappropriate? First of all, you know, I've had the fortune of working in many countries throughout the world and no one does event like India. They really don't. I mean, the most simple event in India is considered to be over the top in America. So working in India for me has been such a learning, inspiring, I, I cannot get, tell you enough words that I've, I've learned so much from the culture of working there. Um, so yes, I brought home elephants and I have a lot of elements from the culture that I really bring to America and try to share it with the American public. As far as people copying my work, I will start worrying when they stop copying. <laughs> That's when you worry. That's where you, you, you know, I, I think it's an honor. I think it's wonderful that whatever I've managed to put out there, someone else could probably see it and try to come up with something of their own. I think that's a great honor. I really do. I want to just touch upon something you said earlier where you talked about how, um, you know, India was so inspiring and you learned so much. What, what part of Indian weddings did you enjoy working on the most? What elements did you see that really stuck with you throughout? Well, the Bharat, let's start with that for a moment there. <laughs> That is like such such an amazing festive, you know, I think, and again, you know, nobody can really understand it until they experience one or that they're, they're being there. And I've tried to, interestingly enough, I tried to create a barat for an American wedding and they were open to it, you know? So I like the idea of, of taking these wonderful cultures and try to bring them here and see, even if, not, if it's not an Indian wedding that I'm doing in America, how we could adapt it because it's festive, it's fun. It's, it's, I mean, talking about hospitality, you know, I don't, and again, you know, I've been 
taken all over the world, so to speak, but the Indian hospitality is like very unique and it's very special. So tell me about mixing um, when it comes to floral decor, you know, mixing with edible fruits and vegetables. It's it's a trend that we've seen, you know, happen. So what do you forecast as seeing something big that's going to happen this year? Because now at least we're, we're really starting on a clean slate, I think, as far as everything is concerned. Right. And you, you know, Neville, if I knew what was coming, I don't know, I would probably retire by now. And, you know, I really, really try as much as I can not to follow trends. I think uh, trends are evil. That's how I've always said that, by the way. The reason why it impedes people from being creative. And that's one of the things that I teach very strongly in my PV Life and a Protege program that the biggest moment and the most profound thing that I find is when you meet a client and you start working with them and you get into their heads and you forget about who you are and something comes up that is different. That for me is just magical. And, you know, and that's how you, you set trends, so to speak. So, you know, I don't, I've never tried to follow trend. I like to meet the client, find out what they like, find out what I could create for them that is a little bit different, not necessarily better than anyone else, but that is a little bit different and unique. And I encourage all of my students to do the same because I think that's the only way to, instead of following trend, to become a trendsetter. Okay, fair enough. So talking about how you sit with your clients and you just discuss these things, what is one thing that you tell brides while you know curating their wedding? like a piece of advice that you share? Oh my God, the one advice that I've shared for years and years and years and years and years and years, I said, listen, I would like you to hire the right people, tell them what you want, make sure that they follow your rule, but the day of your wedding, let go of it all. And the reason that I've said that because I've worked with so many brides that they're so controlling that the day of the event, they want to make sure everything runs properly. And they're so worried about, you know, micromanaging that they forget to have a good time. And for me, I think if you hire the right person and, you know, there are incredible designers and planners in this world. If you hire the right person, tell them exactly what you want you should let go and have a good time. So my advice to them is at your wedding, let go and have a good time. I wanted to also just touch upon um, the topic of sustainability because it's it's everywhere right now, right? Everybody's talking about how to be more sustainable and things like that. So how do you see weddings and events becoming more mindful? Because we know that it's, a, it's an event that there's a lot of consumption. So how can people work towards being more sustainable and mindful when it comes to such big celebrations? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not the person to, you're, you're talking to the wrong person. And the reason why, of course, you know, I come from a culture, from a mentality that more is better and bigger is better. You know, and my entire brand is based on creating these amazing settings that my hope is that people will remember for the rest of their lives. So to be very honest with you, I don't have much advice in how to go about that. I'm not going to lie to you and say that, you know, but the one, one advice that I have is see how you could create certain elements. What I normally do as a designer, I do as a fashion designer. What I do each season, I create a new design or a new collection. And that collection, I would probably use it for six months. So let's say if it's ceiling, whatever, or structure. So that is my way, at least for six months, that I'm not throwing away metal and I'm not reinventing everything. And then after those six months, we sell it or give it away and I create another collection. And I think that might be a way to be a little bit more cautious of, of waste. You know, and even when I finish with whatever elements that I'm not using, I either give it to another company or I give it to the client, this way they could reuse it again. For a country like India, what kind of mood board would you recommend for a bride to be? What kind of colors do you see? What, what do you see? And you know, and again, Neville, you know, our mood, I'm very hesitant in giving advice in what 
color I see because it really depends on the person that you're working with. I take that very seriously. I, I'm not one of those designers that tell my client, oh, by the way, you know, right now there's pink and I think you should, no, no, no. I want to know what they want. I want to see how I could inhabit their mind in order to be able to service them properly. And ultimately, you know, I'm in a service business. I'm a designer first, but I'm also in, in the service business. So I want to know where they're coming from. And I usually take that information to see what I could create with it. Um, so just talk, touching upon that where you're saying it's a service business. Can you just briefly tell us about your process of working with a couple? How do you translate their vision into what the fantastic final product that we see? Of course, of course. You know, and <clears throat> my company, as I said, is based in New York. And I'm very careful in not taking on more than, let's say, two events a month. And the reason that I do that First, I'm in the service business and I want to be able to give the best service as possible to any of the clients that are working with me. So my client will call, we'll set up a meeting. It's very important that we meet in person, even though it's not easy nowadays, of course, hopefully that will change very soon. We will sit down for hours and I will pay attention to see what they like, sometimes what they're wearing, what labels do they like. Uh, and then for me, there has to be a connection. If there's no connection, it's not easy to work with people if you're not connected with. But once they like me, which that's very important, and you know, and I feel that I could work with them, what I normally do, I ask them for a retainer. Not a deposit, a retainer. A retainer means that that gives me the permission to start designing. And I'm one of those designers that is very important that my client know exactly what they're getting. I'm not into surprising my clients. And I'm also one of those designers that gives them not two, but sometimes three different options of design. I think it should look like this, or maybe like this, or maybe like this. And I always feel that is a good tool because it gives them an opportunity to choose. I don't want to say, oh, this is what it is and you shouldn't do anything else. So, you know, once we present that and they choose the design that they like, usually we'll price everything out. It's always negotiating. doesn't matter how wealthy the client is. You know, people get wealthy because they know how to take care of the money. Let's face it. But there's always a negotiation process. Once we arrive at an, an agreement, usually we'll ask for a client for 50% of the total. And then the other 50% is due a month before we install and then we install and we go from there. Thank you so much for your time Preston and for speaking to Vogue for our virtual wedding show. We really appreciate it and I think you've given us a lot of information to digest for our brides-to-be. So thank you once again. Neville, spending. Neville, it's absolutely my pleasure. And if you're ever in New York, you have to visit me. Don't forget that. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> I'm planning to come back soon. <laughs> Thank you so much.